Yeah, boo hoo. <laughs> Declaration by Richard Viscount Howe of the Kingdom of Ireland and William Howe, Esquire, General of His Majesty's Forces in America, the King's Commissioners for Restoring Peace to His Majesty's Colonies. <laughs> and plantations in North America, etc., etc., etc. Although, calm down! <laughs> Although the Congress, whom the misguided Americans suffered to direct their opposition to a reestablishment of the constitutional government of these provinces, have disavowed every purpose of reconciliation not consonant with their extravagant and inadmissible claim of independency. The King's commissioners think fit to declare that they are equally desirous to confer with His Majesty's well-affected subjects upon the means of restoring the public tranquility and establishing establishing a permanent union with every colony as a part of the British Empire. <laughs> the king, being most graciously disposed to direct a revision of such of his royal instructions, as may be construed to lay an improper restraint upon the freedom of legislation in any of his colonies, and to concur in the revisal of all acts by which his subjects there may think themselves agreed. I have no idea what I just said to you. <laughs> it is recommended, however, to the inhabitants at large to reflect seriously upon their present condition and expectations and to judge for themselves whether it be more consistent with honor and happiness to offer up their lives as a sacrifice to the unjust and precarious cause in which they are engaged or to return to their allegiance except the blessings of peace and be secured oh, yeah. peace. Yeah. Got it? Yeah. Peace. Yeah. And be secured in a free enjoyment of their liberty and properties upon the true principles of the Constitution. <laughs> Given at New York the 19th of September, 1776, by command of their excellencies. <laughs> uh, they bounce off. <laughs> His Majesty's most gracious speech to both houses of Parliament on Thursday, October 31st, 1776. My lords and gentlemen, nothing could have afforded me so much satisfaction as to have been able to inform you at the opening of this session that the troubles which have so long distracted my colonies in North America were at an end, and that my unhappy people recovered from their delusion, had delivered themselves from the oppression of their leaders and returned to their duty. But so daring and desperate is the spirit of those leaders whose object has always been dominion and power, that they now openly renounced all allegiance to the crown and all political connections with this country. They have rejected with circumstances of indignity and insult the means of conciliation held out to them under the authority of our commission and have presumed to set up their rebellious confederacies for independent states. If their treason be suffered to take root, much mischief, misfit, mischief, what am I, mischief, <laughs> must grow from it. 
<laughs> to the safety of my loyal colonies, to the commerce of my kingdoms, and indeed to the present system of all Europe. One great advantage, however, will be derived from the object of the, rebel, the rebels being openly avowed and clearly understood. We shall have unanimity at home, founded in the general conviction of the justice and necessity of our measures. I am happy to inform you that by the blessing of divine providence on the good conduct and valor of my officers and forces by sea and land and on the zeal and bravery of the auxiliary troops in my service, Canada is recovered. <laughs> and although, oh yeah, vacation there and then talk to me, asshole. <laughs> Okay. And although from unavoidable delays, the operations at New York did not begin before the month of August, the success in that province has been so important as to give the strongest hopes of the most decisive good consequences. But notwithstanding this fair prospect, we must at all events prepare for another campaign. I continue to receive assurances of amity from the several courts of Europe and am using my utmost endeavors to conciliate unhappy differences between two neighboring powers. And I still hope that all misunderstandings may be removed and Europe continue to enjoy the inestimable, 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 inestimable <laughs> blessings of peace. I think that, and I'm actually doing it the way he delivered it. That's what's astonishing. I think, nevertheless, that in the present situation of affairs, it is expedient that we should be in a respectable state of defense at home. Gentlemen of the House of Commons, I will order the estimates for the ensuing year to be laid before you. It is a matter of real concern to me that the important considerations which I have stated to you must necessarily be followed by great expense. I doubt not, however, but that my faithful commons will readily and cheerfully grant me such supplies as the maintenance of the honor of my crown, the vindication of the just rights of Parliament, and the public and the public welfare shall be found to require. My lords and gentlemen, in this arduous contest, I can have no other object but to promote the true interests of all of my subjects. No people ever enjoyed more happiness <laughs> or lived under a milder government than those now revolted provinces. The improvements in every art of which they boast declare it, their numbers, their wealth, their strength by sea and land, which they think sufficient to enable them to make head against the whole power of the mother country. Our irrefragable proofs of that. Who has ever used in a sentence, irrefragable? <laughs> My desire <laughs> is to restore to them the blessings of law and liberty, equally enjoyed by every British subject, which they have fatally and desperately exchanged for all the calamities of war and the arbitrary tyranny of their chiefs. Okay. Woo! Woo!